WWE 2K22 Universe Mode episode number 29. Welcome to Monday Night Raw, and things have been getting hot and heavy week after week on the road to SummerSlam. And as we inch closer and closer to our next pay-per-view event, what is going to transpire here tonight on Monday Night Raw? And of course, our main event has big time SummerSlam implications as the Intercontinental Championship will be on the line. The Celtic Warrior Sheamus defends against Dominic Dijakovic. How will this match affect the Triple Threat Intercontinental Championship contest at SummerSlam? Who will be defending against Drew McIntyre as well as Pete Dunne at SummerSlam? Will it be Sheamus or will it be Dominic Dijakovic? We're going to find out in tonight's main event. But speaking of SummerSlam, Right here, right now, we kick off Monday Night Raw with the finals of the Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator. The winner challenges champion Santos Escobar at the biggest party of the summer in just a couple of weeks' time. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Paducah, Kentucky. Weighing in at 190 pounds. In the opening round of the Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator, the one and only Ricochet defeated Lince Dorado as well as Humberto Carrillo to qualify for this night. Ricochet is looking for that big time victory and looking to get his first chance, his first crack at the Cruiserweight Championship coming up at SummerSlam. The leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, has been on a roll ever since winning the championship. Multiple title defenses against Grand Metalik, as well as Ricochet's opponent tonight, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Santos Escobar has been untouchable. He just defeated Kushida this past week on main event. But the next time we see him inside the square circle, will his opponent be Ricochet, or will his opponent be this man, the Swerve Isaiah Scott? And his opponent from Tacoma, Washington, weighing in at 201 pounds, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Isaiah Swerve Scott defeated Angel Garza as well as Kalisto in the opening round of the Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator to get here. And remember back before the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, Isaiah Swerve Scott actually defeated the one and only Ricochet in their first meeting here in WWE. Who originally qualified to face Santos Escobar on that night for the Cruiserweight Championship. Of course, Isaiah came up short at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. But he's looking to get another chance at glory coming up at SummerSlam. Both these men earn their right to be here tonight. It's the finals of the Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator. Who will fight the leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, for the Cruiserweight Championship at the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam? We're going to kick off Monday Night Raw right here, right now, figuring out that answer. Things have been getting hot and heavy on the road to SummerSlam, you can just see the sense of urgency week after week as everybody's itching for championship opportunities. Looking to find a way to get on the SummerSlam card, one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. And we got breaking news coming here, right here, right now for you at the SummerSlam pay-per-view. Our next pay-per-view for Universe Mode is going to be coming up on Sunday night, June 26th. And it will be a live premiere right here on the Noah Nation Gaming YouTube channel, Sunday night, June 26th. You aren't going to want to miss it. The SummerSlam pay-per-view. It's Isaiah Swerve Scott looking to put Ricochet away early with that Swerve Stomp, but there's Ricochet taking him down. Not wait to get to SummerSlam on June 26th. What a night it is going to be. And Ricochet looking to pull out the big-time maneuvers early here over Isaiah Swerve Scott. Goes for the mood salt, but Swerve gets the knees up. And as we mentioned, this is a rematch from... A little over a month ago when Isaiah Swerve Scott defeated Ricochet to originally qualify to face Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship back in Philadelphia at Money in the Bank. Isaiah put up a great effort on that night. It's a great contest versus Santos Escobar, but of course Santos was the man getting his hand raised on that occasion. Isaiah Swerve Scott absolutely, just as well as Ricochet did, earning his opportunity to be back in this position tonight to be the next potential number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship Gold. And right here, right now, he's looking very good against Ricochet. He's beating down Ricochet. Isaiah's getting a little bit of aggressive here, showing a different side of the swerve are we seeing here tonight. And he gotta pull out all the stops. 
When a date at SummerSlam, one of the biggest shows of the year and a future championship opportunity is at stake. Isaiah has been at the top of the mountain before. He's an NXT North American champion in the past, as well as Ricochet. Ricochet as well as a former United States champion. So both of these men know what it's like to be champions here in the WWE. And they're looking to add another championship to their resume coming up at SummerSlam. Ricochet now has got Isaiah in a predicament. Could be looking for the move he was looking for earlier. And this time he hits the moon salt. And Ricochet smart to go right into the cover there. Trying to capitalize off the impact, but Isaiah Swerve Scott gets the shoulder up at two. The shoulder up at one, excuse me. Ricochet goes for the drop kick. Isaiah able to push him off. Remember, Santos Escobar originally became the cruiserweight champion. Back at the backlash pay-per-view. Wait a minute, Isaiah's going for the cover here. Ricochet gets the shoulder up. Santos Escobar originally kicking off this new range, the cruiserweight champion, back at backlash. Several months ago in a six-man challenge, elimination style, that featured both Isaiah Swerve Scott as well as Ricochet on that night. Santos Escobar has been in the ring with both of these men before. He knows their characteristics. He knows their styles. Oh, and Isaiah Swerve Scott is looking to be the man to throw Santos Escobar off his game. The shooting star press here, and he follows it up with a DDT. Ricochet eats the canvas. Swerve's looking to follow it up with the offense, going for the double stomp. Ricochet gets out of the way, and a nice clothesline, but the one and only, and follows it up with that basement drop kick. Excuse me. Both these men looking good in this contest. Ricochet looking to one-up Isaiah there with a shooting star press of his own. Swerve gets the shoulder up. A lot of SummerSlam implications riding on Monday Night Raw tonight as we are just a few weeks out from the SummerSlam pay-per-view. Of course, as you already know, coming up in tonight's main event, we are going to see Dominic Dijakovic taking on the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship. And several other matches lined up for you here tonight on Monday Night Raw. we got a couple of SummerSlam matches to confirm as well that we're going to talk about throughout the night as Ricochet laying out Isaiah there. Now Ricochet is headed to the top rope. Could be looking for that signature 630. Exclamation point by the one and only. But it's not enough. Not enough just yet. Ricochet pulling one of his best tools out of the garage there. But it ain't enough to finish the job on Isaiah Swerve Scott. But now he's got him cradled up. Isaiah goes for a ride and he eats the canvas. Ricochet gets the win. Ricochet cradled him up. Went right into the pinfall. And the one and only Ricochet has knocked off Isaiah Swerve Scott. A great contest to kick us off on Monday Night Raw. The rematch certainly lives up to the height. Both men pulling out all the stops. Looking to one-up each other all the way through. The 630 from Ricochet. Plus another maneuver. Enough to put away Isaiah Swerve Scott tonight. And your Cruiserweight Championship matchup for the biggest party of the summer is now confirmed. The leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, will defend the Cruiserweight Championship of the world against the one and only Ricochet. What a match that is going to be coming up on June 26th at SummerSlam. Will the reign of Santos continue, or are we looking at the new Cruiserweight Champion of the world? Ladies and gentlemen, some more breaking news regarding SummerSlam. This feud has been all over the place for months, but we're going to get the conclusion. Mustafa Ali, Seth Rollins, one more time, signed, sealed, and confirmed for the SummerSlam pay-per-view. What a match that is going to be coming up on June 26th. But speaking of a man who's been looking to get on the SummerSlam card, he called out the one and only John Cena, the franchise, a couple of weeks ago. Austin Theory is yet to hear back from the franchise, but Austin Theory looking to continue to plead his case for a SummerSlam contest here this evening. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. Austin Theory has been on a collision course as of late to impress inside the ring, to live up to the moniker of the future of the WWE. Recent victories over Kushida, as well as R-Truth in the ring. 
And Austin Theory is looking to continue that momentum here tonight. But as we mentioned a couple of weeks back, Austin Theory went right to the source. He took to Twitter to call out the 16-time WWE Champion, the franchise of the WWE John Cena, to come back to the WWE and face the future at SummerSlam. Austin Theory has been waiting on an answer. But SummerSlam is then, and this is now. And it ain't John Cena, but it's John Morrison. And John Morrison, every time he steps foot in the ring is nothing short of impressive. But he's been searching for a W for a long time now. Will he get that here tonight against all day Austin Theory? And his opponent from Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 215 pounds, John. John Morrison's got all the tools to get it done inside the squared circle. We've said it time and time again. A former Intercontinental Champion, former ECW World Champion, a former multiple-time Tag Team Champion. But unfortunately for John Morrison, he's been unable to put together a number of victories as of late inside of the squared circle. So he gets another crack at the action here tonight. This time the task is the future of the WWE. Self-proclaimed, I should say, all day, Austin Theory. Nonetheless, this should be an exciting contest continuing on here on Monday Night Raw. Let's see who's going to get their hand raised as the road to SummerSlam continues. And John Morrison right off the bat had Austin Theory in the right predicament and he hit him with that flying chuck kick. John Morrison recently here on WWE Universe Mode. He's taking on Finn Balor. He's taking on Seth Rollins. A couple other matches mixed in there, but every time, unfortunately, for John Morrison, he knows how to impress in the ring with moves like that. He knows how to shine, but he unfortunately just hasn't been able to get his hand raised for a long time here. So Morrison looking to pull out all the stops tonight. 450 splash on Austin Theory early on in this matchup. And he's looking to finally get that W he's been searching for. But all day, Austin Theory is a tough kid. It's gonna be hard to keep down here tonight. Remember Austin Theory, this whole crusade, if you will, to get John Cena to come back to the WWE and fight him at SummerSlam really started and Austin Theory kind of had enough of being called the future of the WWE. And in his eyes, and we got to give him credit, not truly living up to that moniker as he looks to put John Morrison away here. Morrison gets the shoulder up. But Austin Theory again took to Twitter a few weeks ago to say that he was done playing games. It was all business inside of the ring and he was just looking to get the W's. Looking to remind everyone why he is called the future of the WWE. And Austin Theory has been doing that as of late. He's been impressing time after time inside the squared circle. And he has been getting his hand raised. But I'm sure John Cena has got his eyes on this matchup. I'm sure he's looking to see Austin Theory continue that momentum. And kind of deem Austin Theory worthy enough to come back and fight at SummerSlam. And Austin Theory's got all the tools. He's got the maneuvers, he's got the look, he's got that it factor that so many people strive to have. But as we mention all the time here on Universe Mode, it's about putting together the W's. That's how you get championship opportunities, that's how you make more money in the WWE, is getting your hand raised after the bell to bell. As John Morris looking to knock off Austin Theory here, the Theory gets the shoulder up. John Morris, a nice kick. I mentioned all the time, John Morrison's got such an amazing arsenal of weapons. So innovative inside the squared circle. Sometimes he can be a little too good for his own good. Kind of catches himself in some unfortunate predicaments. Some crash and burn scenarios for John Morrison. Have not helped in aiding to eventually get those victories that he's looking for. As Austin Theory is looking to put Morrison away here as he drops him head first right on the knee. Bit of a shoulder breaker, if you will, there. Morrison gets the shoulder up. Austin Theory has got to keep moving, though. John Morrison, as we mentioned, he has been able to put the W's together, but you can't take him lightly inside the ring. A former champion who's got to be hungrier than ever at this point in his career. Morrison's heading to the top rope. Austin Theory's down off that knee. Morrison known to take it to the air sometimes, but look at the Alexa against. Taking the dive on Austin Theory. Saw Theory getting to his feet and John Morrison had other plans. You got to give him credit. Using his smarts there. Not looking to have a crash and burn scenario as we mentioned. Off to the knee. He goes right into the cover on Theory. Theory gets the shoulder up. 
Great matchup here as Austin Theory with the drop kick. Back and forth we go in this contest since the opening bell. Last three, four minutes have been very impressive for both men. All about getting the W here. So let's see who's going to pick up the victory. It's Austin Theory, nice kick. And John Morrison may be in a predicament as Morrison gets folded inside out and eats the canvas for dinner. And that might have been it had there not been a rope break right there. Austin Theory, that's some of the, the naive miss, if you will, of the young man. He's got all the tools, but sometimes not able to pay attention to those veteran instincts, if you will. Not watching his ring awareness there as he now finds himself in a predicament. John Morrison, look at this, takes out Austin Theory. Morrison going to pick up the W here. Oh, man, that was close. Morrison almost had Austin Theory there. A Monday night delight was moments away from finally getting the W he's been searching for, but Austin Theory, so tough. And credit to him, is hard to keep down. Theory popping up. And look at this, grabs a hold of a pump handle slam there. Variation. Morrison's a little dazed and confused. Austin Theory trying to keep the momentum going. Misses for that shot. John Morrison's right there with the kick. We're going back and forth. Morrison off the standing Spanish fly to Austin Theory. And Theory flees the ring the second he gets the opportunity trying to save himself from any further damage. I think Morrison might have Theory a little shook, but there's Theory just trying to assault Morrison here. Nothing pretty, just lefts and rights. A kick at him followed by a clothesline. Theory looking to unload on John Morrison. Morrison's fighting back, though. Going back and forth the last number of minutes. Austin Theory goes for the clothesline. Morrison counters it as pop-up tornado DDT. Morrison's going to steal the victory. That's going to be it. No, Theory gets the shoulder up. What a great contest between these two men. John Morrison is throwing everything in the kitchen sink at this young man, but credit to Theory, man. He is staying in this contest. We're going to keep raking up the Ws in his young career. Nice kick to the midsection. Follows it up with that shooting star press. That combination will certainly knock the wind out of you. Leave you gasping for air. Meanwhile, Morrison on the shoulders and may have just got his lights completely turned off there. Morrison may be out. Theory to the cover. And that's it. You can probably count to 20 off that knockout blow. The self-proclaimed future of the WWE all day Austin Theory. Picking up a big time victory over John Morrison here tonight. Credit to John Morrison. He hung in there and gave Theory everything he had. Oh, wait a minute here. Come on, Theory. The match is over. And this is a little unnecessary. Austin Theory stomping a damn mud hole in John Morrison here. Adding insult to injury. Like it or not, Theory gets the victory and continue to prove that he is the future of the business. Well, more matches continue to be signed for the SummerSlam pay-per-view. Quite possibly the hottest tag team right now in the WWE. The Mysterios are set to get a tag team championship opportunity against Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders, coming up at SummerSlam. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting breaking news here. Oh, man, we got to jump to this. John Cena has took to Twitter and said, Hey, Theory, I've had my eyes on you. The self-proclaimed future, huh? Well, let's put that to the test. You want the franchise at SummerSlam? Simple as this. Yes, I'll see you in Phoenix. That is huge breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. The franchise, John Cena, is on his way back to the WWE on June 26th. And he's going to go one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever against all day Austin Theory. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, the camera's cut into the backstage of Seth Rollins, and he's got a hold of his SummerSlam opponent, Mustafa Ali. What the hell is this? We know the issues run deep. Mustafa Ali has been the ultimate thorn in the side of Seth Rollins for months here in the WWE. And as announced earlier tonight, I thought these two were going to settle the score at SummerSlam, but it looks like Seth Rollins doesn't want to wait for Phoenix. Absolutely unnecessary. Rollins jumping Mustafa Ali. 
and back in the interview area, now he's got a steel chair. Rollins has become completely unhinged. Loss after loss after loss to Mustafa Ali has sent Seth Rollins off the deep end. And Mustafa trying to mount some offense back, but Seth Rollins just cuts him off. We gotta get some help back here. This is absolutely ridiculous. Mustafa Ali clearly being jumped in the locker room and just needs a steel chair right to the head. Absolutely uncalled for actions by the Messiah Seth Rollins. And now what? Mustafa Ali is absolutely helpless here and possibly knocked out. Rollins sends Ali into the concrete. And like it or not, a huge message was just sent on the road to SummerSlam. We're going to try to move on here. A couple of more matches signed for Monday Night Raw tonight. The Colossal Omas takes on member of Lucha House Party Kalisto. As well as the modern day Maharaja Jinder Mahal taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. And the results of those contests see the Colossal Omas continue to run rampant over Raw with the victory over Kalisto. And Jinder Mahal picks up the victory over Shinsuke Nakamura. Let's get back to the action inside the squared circle. And the Apex Predator, who's been on the hunt for the attacker of his tag team partner, Riddle, for the last number of weeks, is looking to continue to hunt down the Hurt Business. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, representing RK Bro from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper, Randy Orton! A number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, Randy Orton was in search of the attacker for his tag team partner, Riddle. He believed the attacker was the leader of the Hurt Business, the almighty Bobby Lashley. Randy Orton wanted Lashley in the ring. Lashley insisted that Orton would get the Hurt put on him but instead he sent Shelton Benjamin to the ring and not himself for a contest. Shelton Benjamin took on Randy Orton in the main event and Randy Orton absolutely took out tons of anger and aggression on Shelton Benjamin in that contest, picking up the victory. But after the matchup, after the bell, Randy Orton was not done. He took the fight to Shelton Benjamin just a little bit more, as you saw. Randy Orton became completely unhinged, wanted to avenge the attack of his tag team partner Riddle and laid out Benjamin once again with yet another RKO. And ladies and gentlemen, we can confirm that Randy Orton gets the match he won a number of weeks ago as he will take on the almighty Bobby Lashley one-on-one -on -one at the biggest party of the summer SummerSlam on June 26th. Randy Orton believes that Lashley was the one who took out Riddle in the parking lot upon arriving to the arena a few weeks ago. Bobby Lashley denies but nonetheless, those two are going to meet in the ring at SummerSlam. And his opponent, representing the Hurt Business, from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing in at 200 pounds, Cedric Alexander! Randy Orton got a hold of Shelton Benjamin a number of weeks ago. At SummerSlam, he's got a date set with Bobby Lashley. But as for tonight... Hurt Business member Cedric Alexander is what is on the line for Randy Orton. Remember this all goes back as we've been mentioning. To Matt Riddle, one half of RK Bro. Being knocked out cold. Found unconscious in the parking lot. Just moments after he arrived to the arena on Monday Night Raw. Randy Orton took to Twitter. To claim that Bob, he believes that Bobby Lashley was the one to lay out Riddle. As issues between those two men stem from a few previous weeks, Bobby Lashley denied the accusations, actually pointed the finger instead at the Viper Randy Orton. Randy Orton wanted a fight. He wanted to fight Bobby Lashley. Lashley insisted that Randy Orton would get the hurt put on him for putting his name in his mouth. And that is, of course, when Lashley decided to send Shelton Benjamin to the ring a few weeks ago on Raw. Unfortunately for Lashley, that did not work out in the hurt business favor. Whether Lashley wants to get involved or not, Randy Orton's going to get his wish. And he's going to meet Bobby Lashley again, as we mentioned on June 26th, one-on-one -on -one in that grudge match at SummerSlam. As the road to SummerSlam continues, Randy Orton's got a deal with Cedric Alexander tonight. 
Also a member of the Hurt Business, former tag team champion with Shelton Benjamin. A former cruiserweight champion is Cedric Alexander as well. Cedric not one to take lightly inside of the ring. He's a member of the Hurt Business for a reason. All those men are men that believe in each other inside of the ring. And I'm sure Cedric was sent out here with orders from Lashley as well as MVP and encouragement from Shelton Benjamin to put the hurt on Randy Orton, to soften up Randy Orton as we inch closer to SummerSlam to avenge the loss of Shelton Benjamin a number of weeks ago. And Cedric Alexander's looking good, credit to him, so far in this contest. We know he's not one to take lightly, as we mentioned. Nice springboard moonsault there, credit where it's due. And going back to who may have attacked Riddle, as we mentioned, Randy Orton believes it was the almighty Bobby Lashley. Of course, he believes that to be so after Bobby Lashley was upset that Riddle defeated him in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. Of course, over a month ago at this point, Bobby Lashley, however, argued that statement saying that the Hurt Business got what they wanted, their win back in that tag team matchup on Monday Night Raw a few weeks ago as well when the Hurt Business defeated Randy Orton and Riddle. And you remember on that night, Randy Orton seemingly was frustrated with Riddle. We speculated for weeks that Orton was frustrated with Riddle. As Orton did not tag himself back into that matchup and allowed Riddle to just get beat down basically by the Hurt Business. And seemingly just accept the loss. We speculated that Randy Orton was upset with Riddle after Riddle's demand pinned to lose the World Tag Team Championships to the Viking Raiders as well as the rematch between the two teams at Backlash. We also speculated that Orton was upset that Riddle got a chance to participate in the Money in the Bank ladder match over the Apex Predator. What we seem to believe is that Randy Orton, yes, was frustrated at Riddle, but obviously it just doesn't seem right that Randy Orton would be furious at the attack on Riddle if there was frustrations there. Obviously, this stems deeper than just a number of losses in Randy Orton's mind. Randy Orton may have been upset, but he's looking to avenge his tag team partner and get some answers on behalf of his tag team partner, who's currently out for a number of weeks. Randy Orton, again, believes that's Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley denies those accusations, but nonetheless, it's going to be a grudge match. And one man is going to shut up the other come June 26. Cedric Alexander continuing to bring the fight to the Apex Predator. Orton with a clothesline there, takes Cedric off his feet. And what a hell of a night it has been here on Monday Night Raw. Multiple matches for SummerSlam confirmed. Bobby Lashley and Randy Orton, Mustafa Ali and Seth Rollins. And we just saw that altercation back in the backstage area. Seth Rollins looking to get an early edge on Mustafa Ali. Absolutely just laying him out. Multiple steel, steel chair shots, excuse me, and then just smacking crushing Mustafa Ali's face right off the concrete in the locker room. Hopefully we can get an update on Mustafa Ali's condition in regards to that attack. And of course also confirmed for SummerSlam tonight we're going to see Dominic and Rey Mysterio challenge Eric and Ivar, excuse me, for, for the World Tag Team Championships. And the Cruiserweight Championship going to be on the line as well as Ricochet. It was one-on-one -on -one with the champion Santos Escobar. Of course, also confirmed for the SummerSlam pay-per-view, Finn Balor takes on Jeff Hardy. Those two men looking to finish their rivalry in an extreme rules matchup, which is going to be huge. Randy Orton sends Cedric into the ring. Of course, the WWE Championship will be on the line. AJ Styles defends against Mr. Money in the Bank Edge, who will be cashing in on that night in a WrestleMania rematch. And of course, the Intercontinental Championship matchup, which may seem, or may see, excuse me, a change in moments, as the match is set to be Sheamus defending against Drew McIntyre and Pete Dunne in a triple threat matchup, but Sheamus is set to defend the Intercontinental Championship in just a couple of minutes against Dominic Dijakovic. If Dijakovic wins and Sheamus is out, Dijakovic's in, and we're going to have ourselves a new triple threat match coming up at SummerSlam. SummerSlam shaping up to be a huge event on June 26th. Cannot wait to get there. We have huge implications regarding that event and our main event in moments. But Randy Orton beating down Cedric Alexander here. I'm sure every shot, every right and left, every time he's got Cedric in a predicament, he's thinking about avenging his tag team partner, Riddle. As Randy Orton looks to continue to run through the Hurt Business, Cedric Alexander in a predicament here. 
Orton could be going for a superplex. It's a big move, and Randy Orton's all, wait, wait, wait a minute here. I don't think Randy Orton's going for no superplex. Orton's got a hold. Oh my goodness, an RKO from the top. The Viper strikes. RKO from the damn top rope. And you can probably count all the way till we get to SummerSlam. Cedric's gotta be knocked out cold, and Orton's gotta be feeling good after that. My goodness. Randy Orton just taking Cedric Alexander on a damn roller coaster ride from the top rope all the way down to the map below. There you see it delivering that RKO. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. Orton's got his back turned, but the almighty Bobby Lashley is at ringside. Orton better turn around. Bobby Lashley is SummerSlam opponents in the ring, and he's grabbing a hold of the Viper here. Orton gets the win over Cedric Alexander, but Bobby Lashley is looking to have the last laugh laying out the Viper here tonight. SummerSlam and the road to it continues to get hotter and hotter. Orton may have won the battle, but Bobby Lashley won the war on this night. Well, coming up on WWE Main Event on Universe Mode Episode 30, Drew McIntyre and Pete Dunne, the co-number one contenders for the Intercontinental Championship, going to be forced to team up yet again against Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. And it's a tag team victory between those two men that initially got them involved in the Intercontinental Championship. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. But speaking of the Intercontinental Championship, it's go time here in the main event. The gold is on the line. And we could be looking at a new SummerSlam affair. When Drew McIntyre and Pete Dunne stand across the ring, who will be in there defending the gold? Will it be Sheamus or will it be this man? Feast your eyes on Dominic Dijakovic. Dijakovic earning this victory a couple of weeks ago on WWE Main Event where he scored a big time victory over the Prince Finn Balor. And of course, he's got Jeff Hardy to thank of course, Jeff Hardy got involved in that matchup, nailing Finn Balor across the head with a cold, hard steel chair. But nonetheless, Dijakovic was victorious, and management are awarding him a huge opportunity here this evening. We talk about it every time Dijakovic steps in foot, steps foot in the ring. Super agile, a super athlete, all the tools to be a world champion in my eyes. But here tonight, Dominic Dijakovic. Looks at a new opportunity. Looks to hold WWE gold for the first time in his career. He stands across the ring from the Celtic Warrior, from the defending Intercontinental Champion, Sheamus, who's been dominant ever since winning the gold. Will the domination continue here tonight? He originally won the Intercontinental Championship by defeating Shinsuke Nakamura at the Backlash pay-per-view. He retained the Intercontinental Gold over Drew McIntyre at Money in the Bank. But how SummerSlam came about was when Drew McIntyre, along with Pete Dunne, scored the tag team victory over Jinder Mahal and Sheamus a number of weeks ago on main event. McIntyre pinning Sheamus. That match becoming a triple threat matchup after Pete Dunne would defeat Drew McIntyre last week here on Monday Night Raw in a phenomenal snot nose in your face contest. Sheamus has got a lot of history, recent history, with Pete Dunne and Drew McIntyre. But all roads lead to the Intercontinental Championship. And if Sheamus loses that gold tonight, then he can kiss SummerSlam goodbye. This is how you do it on the road to SummerSlam. Pedal to the metal. No time for breaking now. It's main event time here on Raw, and it's all about the gold. Dijakovic versus Sheamus. Let's send things down to the ring announcer. Introducing the challenger from Kingsboro, Massachusetts, weighing in at 270 pounds. 
Dominic Dijakovic. And introducing the champion from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds. He is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. Well, here we go. Your main event of Monday Night Raw. Sheamus handing over the Intercontinental Championship, and he could be handing over that championship for the last time. Dominic Dijakovic feasts his eyes on the prize. Who is going to walk away with the gold? The road to SummerSlam continues right here, right now. Dominic Dijakovic, Sheamus, Intercontinental Championship. Let's get things underway. The bell has sounded. This is going to be a good one. Two big men with similar but yet so different styles inside of the ring. Sheamus is a powerhouse. Dominic Dijakovic has got a full set of abilities inside of that ring. Between strength, size, and agility. Dijakovic's got all the tools to be a champion. And if he can knock off Sheamus tonight, he'll be holding the gold for the very first time. Dijakovic and Sheamus locking horns. Look at this, early on, just moments after the bell sounds, Dijakovic with a big time half Nelson to the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. I'm going to follow it up with a sidewalk slam there. And Sheamus, it's going to be a hard fought victory if Dijakovic gets his hand raised tonight. We know how tough Sheamus is inside of the ring. What a power bomb! And Dijakovic going for the cover here in the early going, but Sheamus gets the shoulder up. As we mentioned, Sheamus retained the Intercontinental Championship. His last defense was against Drew McIntyre. Dijakovic miscalculating that moonsault there. That is definitely going to give the edge to Sheamus. Sheamus, again, as we mentioned, defeated Drew McIntyre at Money in the Bank. Retained the Intercontinental Championship in an awesome defense. And McIntyre fought tooth and nail. And it took Sheamus, sending Drew McIntyre flying off the top rope in an unorthodox maneuver in Sheamus' arsenal to get the victory. After the bro kick of all moves, did it do it justice. Sheamus has a dig deep that night to retain the Intercontinental Championship. And whether you like Sheamus' attitude or not, he knows how to get it done inside the ring, and you can't take him lightly whatsoever. Dijakovic again going for the pinball here. Maybe a smart strategy for Dijakovic to keep going for these high-impact maneuvers and going for the early pinfalls to kind of throw Sheamus off his game. Sheamus is definitely the more experienced when it comes to these big-time main event matches. Over Dijakovic, Sheamus has been the WWE Champion multiple times before. United States Champion, Tag Team Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, Mr. Money in the Bank, Royal Rumble winner, WrestleMania wins. Sheamus is a Grand Slam Champion here in the WWE. And Dijakovic's looking to get his first accolade as he sends Sheamus, backbreaker, into the hardest part of the ring. And this brawl has made its way to the outside here. Sheamus with the neck breaker. Sheamus gonna make his way back into the ring. Oh, he went for the knee, miscalculates it there. And I'm not surprised that Sheamus miscalculated that maneuver. Sheamus doesn't go high risk often, and when he does, he's really throwing caution in the wind. Dijakovic now back in control here, grabs a hold of Sheamus, and just disposes of him. Dominic Dijakovic feasts in his eyes in the Intercontinental Champion here. Sheamus may be in deep trouble. Dijakovic goes for the big boot. Sheamus gets out of the way and he hits the clothesline. They shoot Dijakovic off. Goes for the forearm. Dijakovic sidesteps it. Moonsault and he takes out Sheamus off his feet. And those are most likely going to be the maneuvers that are going to aid Dijakovic in possible victory here. Moves that Sheamus isn't used to. Moves that Sheamus doesn't know how to react or counter to inside of the ring. Dijakovic's got to use his strong, strong suits in this matchup. His strength, his size, his speed, his agility. He's a full package of action inside of the ring. Now Sheamus is in trouble here. Dijakovic stomping away on the Intercontinental Champion. Dijakovic's really pulling something out of the hat. Something different out of the hat, move after move. 
And it's definitely gotta be throwing Sheamus off his game a little bit. Sheamus goes to the second rope there, and Sheamus goes uncharacteristic with that shoulder block to take Dijakovic off his feet. And those are the different moves that Sheamus is gonna have to dig deep in his arsenal to try to defeat Dijakovic here. And Dijakovic gets set for a ride. And not enough just yet. Sheamus caught Dijakovic off his game with that flying shoulder block there. Followed up with a big time maneuver. Not enough. Sheamus is headed back to the top rope. Sheamus is getting very uncharacteristic here. Looking to pull out any tool he can and this time hits the shoulder block from the top rope. And Sheamus is without a doubt pulling out different moves out of his arsenal to try to counteract everything that Dijakovic is throwing at him in this contest. Which has basically been a little bit of everything here. Dijakovic's now sitting on the top rope. Sheamus here is grabbing a hold. He's got Dijakovic in a fireman's carry position. And this is how he beat Drew McIntyre at Money in the Bank with that senton maneuver. And Dijakovic may be in trouble again. That is how Sheamus retained the Intercontinental Championship at the Money in the Bank pay per view. Dijakovic's dazed. Backbreaker. We know what's coming. Big time. Bro kick from the champion. And not many are going to get out from that maneuver. Sheamus retains the Intercontinental Championship. What a great main event. Dijakovic gave it his all. Threw everything in the kitchen sink at the Celtic Warrior. But Sheamus fought tooth and nail. And was the better man on this occasion. The Intercontinental Championship stays with the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. But will that be the same fate? Coming up on June 26th at SummerSlam, when Sheamus defends against Drew McIntyre and Pete Dunne in a triple threat contest. Thank you for joining us here on Universe Mode Episode 29, and on Universe Mode Episode 30, it's WWE Main Event. Thank you for joining us, and good night, everybody!